Um, welcome, everyone. Um, nice to see so many people joining. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna give it about two or three minutes, and then we'll get we'll get started with today's installment of conversations on photography. Uh, we'll let everyone settle in with their coffees and their and or their cocktails or whatever people are doing after work. It's been nice to see uh, with each one of these talks, um, it's been wonderful to see uh, just a lot of new names, just folks that we are, are not our regular uh, kind of the pe people that uh, in the past have engaged with Project Save. So that's that's been really wonderful. Uh, so thank, thank you everyone for being here. <clears throat> we'll get started in about one minute, everyone. Wonderful. <clears throat> well, I'll, I'll kind of uh, slowly get started. Um, thank you all very much uh, for joining us for our uh, another installment of Conversations on Photography, which is a series that uh, we started here at Project Save uh, last year. It's been quite successful, quite popular, and so we're, we're very grateful and happy for everyone to be joining us. and for uh, connecting with a lot of new people um, that are finding out about Project Save around the world, um, and also reconnecting with uh, wonderful people that have supported Project Save for many years, who this is now a new way uh, uh, through a new um, initiative that we're connecting and, and talking about the, the power and the impact of photography and the importance of archiving. Um, I'll very quickly, uh, those folks who are joining us who might not know that much about Project Save who are maybe joining us for the first time, um, very briefly, a little background. Um, my name is Arto Bon. I'm the executive director of Project Save. Um, Project Save uh, started uh, in the 1960s in New York City um, by uh, our founder, Ruth uh, Tomasian. And um, it was formalized as a nonprofit in 1975 uh, here in the Boston area uh, after Ruth spent, um, you know, around 10 years collecting thousands and thousands of photographs. Um, it became Project Save in 1975 formally. Um, so we're nearing 50 years of, of uh, preserving and sharing uh, photographs from all over the world uh, um, that reflect the global Armenian experience. Um, at this point, um, we, our, our archivists are, are always trying to come up with a kind of, of a final hard count, but um, it, it's easily at least around 80,000 original, this is not a digital archive, these are 80,000 original hard copy photographs dating from the 19th century uh, to the present day. Of, of photographs that represent Armenian life uh, around the world. Um, but what's ended up becoming also equally as important is that um, uh, as Ruth and her team collected these photos for all these decades, we've not only now, we're not only the oldest and largest repository of photographs from the Armenian world, um, anywhere in the world, there is no archive like this, but it turns out we're also uh, quite a vibrant and and kind of uh, important photography archive in North America. There just aren't many archives like this. Period. 
Um, so uh, in the last year, uh, through, for example, this initiative, Conversations on Photography, what I've been doing is uh, pivoting a little bit uh, for us to have a, a kind of champion photography itself, to talk about uh, photography's impact um, socially, historically, culturally, uh, not just for Armenians, but but beyond uh, the Armenian world, uh, because uh, as perhaps we'll touch base on uh, today with our speaker, Elena Bulat, um, a lot of the photographs uh, that we have in our collection, they are of Armenians, but of course they're photos of Armenians, let's say in Cuba or in Russia or in Wisconsin or Japan. So they're photos of Armenians, but these are Armenians who are becoming something else. They're becoming American. They're becoming European, French, uh, Russian, uh, Argentinian. Um, uh, so there's a lot of other types of histories going on in these photographs other than um, uh, specifically the Armenian experience. Um, before I introduce our speaker for today, Elena Bulat, I do want to mention uh, two things. One is, um, uh, as we're now kind of unbelievably entering the holiday season, um, the annual uh, Project Save uh, calendar uh, is being put together. This is something that we curate every year uh, with special photographs uh, that uh, the public may not know that we have. And a beautiful uh, calendar is, is put together. Uh, all the proceeds go to help continue our, our work, our mission. Um, uh, so you're all welcome to go to projectsave.org. Uh, you can check out our new website, which we're very excited about. And there's also ways there to either uh, purchase the calendar or other ways to sponsor. There are other sponsorship opportunities to help uh, support what we do as we continue to grow and expand. Um, with that, uh, I'm very, very pleased and excited today to welcome our speaker, Elena Bulat. Um, Elena is the Paul M. and Harriet L. Wiseman Senior Photograph Conservator for Special Collections at the Wiseman Preservation Center at, at Harvard Library at Harvard University. She's been there since 2007. Um, before that, she was uh, in Rochester, New York, where she served as the paper and photograph conservator. Um, in 2001 to 2003, Elena was the Andrew W. Mellon Fellow at the Advanced Residency Program in Photograph Conservation at George uh, A. A. Permanence Institute at the Rochester Institute of Technology. Um, I'm also very pleased to say that Elena is uh, part of Project Saves uh, new advisory board, um, and we're very uh, happy to welcome her and very grateful to her. Um, today, Elena is going to be speaking about the history of photography, and, and I thought um, in all of these conversations we've had with our other speakers, this hasn't been yet something we've touched upon. So um, I think uh, hopefully this will be a very lively, wonderful conversation, I'm sure. And I'll turn it over to Elena. Thank you, Arthur. And thank you so much for Project SAFE and personally to you, Arthur, to, for, for inviting me for these conversations. It's a privilege, it's my pleasure. And thank you everybody who came today for this presentation. Uh, I would share my screen. And uh, while Elena is doing that, I, I should just mention, um, as you all uh, think of questions, please feel free to share them in the chat. Um, and when we're in our uh, discussion portion of the event, uh, we will uh, funnel those questions uh, uh, to Elena. Great. So good, good evening, everyone. Thank you for finding time to join me with uh, for this conversation about in the invention of photography. When Arthur asked me if I can talk about the invention of photography in relation to Project SAFE, I thought immediately about direct connection between the invention of photography and the Project SAFE. The invention of photography with 
continuous evolution helps to share the information in objective ways. Can you imagine your life and your children's life without photography? How can you pass your personal history and the history of Armenian without photography? It's always subject, history is always subjective because people are writing history, but photography is the scientific key for reality objective, ob objectivity. As a photograph conservator, I believe in material culture and in order to save collections, it helps to know about history and materiality of these collections. Today, everybody feels like a photographer. We take images with our phones, we can take selfies, we can edit these images easily with no really spent the time spent. We all like photography, even though this conversation today will be not directly about this great collection of photographs in this archive, but I hope uh, it will help to appreciate physical photographs even more. How to define the photograph? Can those images we take every day be called photographs? Focal Encyclopedia of Photography has a definition that I like. A reasonably stable image made by the effect of light on a chemical substance. Light is energy in the form of the visible spectrum. If light or some other vis visible wavelength or of energy is not used to make the final picture by chemical means, it cannot be by definition be a photograph. With this definition of photography, we will talk about the history of its invention. This is a photographic process evaluation tree drawn by Mark Osterman, former photographic process historian at, at George Eastman Museum, International Museum of Photography. You probably recognize this two names in the blue circle, Louis Daguerre and Fox Talbot. These two names can be found in every history of photography book. Where can we start from? Let's start from the beginning. One element of photographic process was known from the Neolithic period, but explained and developed only in the 16th and 17th century. This was the camera obscura. The camera obscura, Latin from darkum, is an optical device that projects an image and of its surroundings on the screen. It's used by uh, in drawing and for entertainment and was one of the inventions that led to photography. The image can be projected on top paper and can be then traced to produce a highly accurate representation. Photography might have been invented much earlier, but the need for it had not been felt. The concept of photographic processes had been discussed as fantasies way before the 19th century. But what happened at the first half of the 19th century? In the first half of the 19th century, with the railroad's advancement, cheaper and more reliable postal service, introduction of telegraph, and rise of mass circulation press dramatically changed the way people communicated and experienced time and space. Today, with understanding and making a parallel between industrial development, economic, social, cultural history in the first of the 19th century, becomes clear that the process of the photography invention was global and very collaborative. During the last 30 years, it has been extensive research of photography invention. The research uncovered many names of experimenters who worked in many countries at the same time to find a way how to document reality. August 19, 1839, French man Louis Daguerre announces his daguerreotype pro process at the French Academy of Science. Almost the same time, Englishman Fox Talbot announced 
his photographic process. But since Daguerre was the first who patented his process and opened it to the world, we have August 19, 1839 as a birthday of photography. Photography invention was one of many technical advances of the 19th century. Johann Schultz, Thomas Wedgwood, and Sir Humphrey Davy, Hercules Lawrence, Hippolyte Bayard, Joseph Nesiphor Nieps, those names are crucial for understanding the photography invention. In 1833, the French-born photographer Hercules, Hercules Florence worked with paper sensitized with silver salts to produce prints of drawings. He called this process photography. This term was used by Florence years before the photography invention. However, since he conducted his experiments in Brazil, apart from the major scientific centers of that time, his contribution was lost to history until 1973, when they were rediscovered. The notion of simultaneous invention, that two or more people can develop the same concept at about the same time was mentioned by Florence and other photography pioneers. Simultaneous invention makes it difficult to construct a linear chronology of photography. Hippolyte Bayard invented a direct positive process on paper in camera and presented the world's first public exhibition of photograph on June 24th, uh, 1839. He was asked to postpone announcing his direct positive process on paper to the French Academy of Science by Fran Francois Arago, a friend of Louis Daguerre. Arago's conflict of interest caused Bayard the recognition as one of the principal inventors of photography. Bayard made self-portrait as a drowned man and sent it to French Academy of Science to show his disappointment. Let's continue with the history of the invention. The world's first known successful photograph was made by Nisiphor Nieps on a metal plate in 1826-27, using the first professional camera made by Charles Chevalier. It shows the, the view from Nieps's workroom window. The result was permanent positive image. The exposure time was eight hours. Now we'll get back to the gear. We mentioned Louis Daguerre earlier as one of the key figures in the photography invention. What do we know about Daguerre? Daguerre was a theoretical artist who was very well known by his dioramas. He used camera obscura concept to sketch from reality. The dioramas displayed astonishing photographic details, lighting in and perspective. Obsessed with the idea to make this fugitive image fixed, the gear occupied laboratory and carried out mysterious experiments for years. In 1831, the gear discovered the light sensitivity of iodide of silver. The same year, the gear and Nieps, heliography inventor, started the collaboration to continue the photography experimentation and achieved a great success but Nieps died in July, 1833. At that time, the concept of photography was almost established. After Nieps's death, Daguerre remained in charge of the contract, sharing it with Nieps's son, Isidore Nieps. In 1835, he got positive images using far shorter exposure time than with heliography. In 1837, he managed to fix these images. The exposure in the camera requires a very long time to produce an image, but Daguerre made the crucial discovery that an invisible image created by much shorter exposure could be chemically developed into, into a vis visible image. Daguerre said, I have sized the light, I have arrested the flight. <clears throat> In 
chemical development step was such a discovery. How it happened is one of the classic stories of photography, or maybe anecdotes. Here's the story from the History of Photography book by Helmut and Alison Gershain. The gear put away in his chemical cupboard a plate which had been exposed apparently as unsuccessfully as usual, into, intending to repolish and use it again. When a few days later he opened the cupboard, he found to his am amazement the underexposed plate impressed with a distinct picture. He quickly made a number of exposures as before, put the plates into a cupboard one at, at, a, at a time, and by lengthy process of elimination of the various chemicals it contained, he established the, that the vapor from a few drops of split mercury from broken thermometer had worked the miracle. The exposure time now shortened to 20 minutes, half an hour, through chemical developing with use of fumes of mercury. The gear basically pushed heliography and other experimental processes back and left his name on the daguerreotype process, knowing that only his own process would be a commercial success. So the invention became the gears with the name of Nieps pushed to the background. How to describe daguerreotype process? A thoroughly polished silver plate was sensitized in vapors of iodine, then exposed in a camera obscura, then exposed to mercury vapors, which was developing step. This development was in fact such an amplification of the effect of light that the exposure time was hardly more than 30 minutes. Fixing was done by immersing the plate in sodium thiosulfate. The daguerreotype was first truly practical photographic system. The gears process was everything that had been claimed. It was truly marvelous and practical. However, the process and its characteristics had many limitations. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the image was recorded laterally reversed as a mural. It could not bear a lightest physical touch without abrasion. Requ requiring protecting behind the glass. Multiple copies could not be generated directly from the original. The image did not appear as positive at all angles of hue. The highly polished surface of the plate was annoyingly reflective with different lighting. The process was very expensive and poisonous. The anticipated discoveries and improvements came rapidly. Exposure time was reduced with better optics and camera design. Aiding bromine in 1845 made exposure time to three to 15 minutes. Instead of 30 minutes, the mechanical stability of the image of the uh, and the range of the tonality were increased with use a gold chloride as toning. Few words about different styles of housing for daguerreotypes. Usually British and American daguerreotypes housed in cases. Majority of European daguerreotypes are framed. The daguerreotype process is direct positive, which means there's no negative was used. So no other copies could be made. Every daguerreotype is unique image. This is William Henry Fox Talbot, the inventor of practical photographic process on paper. In 1834, five years before the invention of photography was publicly announced, William Henry Fox Talbot, the English inventor, botanist, and amateur artist, began his experimentations with the idea of recording the nature scene onto a surface. Talbot's contribution laid the foundation for the negative to positive process from which most 19th and 20th century photographs were derived. 
Talbot's early attempts include, included images he made without the camera, which he called photogenic drawings, meaning drawings uh, produced by light. Flat objects, leaves, laces were placed in a printing frame. A piece of cotton writing paper was sensitized with sodium chloride or table salt. And then silver nitrate was applied. This created the silver chloride, which is known light sensitive compound. The sensitized paper was placed on the plants and exposed to the sun. The prints were not fixed, but different salts were used to sp stabilize these prints temporarily. It means they were still light sensitive. Talbot also was looking for an easy process to make copies and facsimiles of manuscripts, objects of art, and letters. This is an example of compact copying of the letters and objects of art. There were no printers and scanners at that time. Next step of Talbot's invention was intro introducing paper photographs made in camera obscura. Now Talbot was uh, able to capture images of landscapes, architecture, and people. The exposure time was hours long, especially in England, where there's not much of the sunlight anyway. Talbot placed these small cameras around his Lake of Handy house. His wife called them mouse tra traps. <clears throat> The early photography was full of color until 1842, especially photogenic drawings in the early experimental photography. Here you see some of the variations of photographic uh, photogenic drawings stabilized with different salts. Sometimes we hear that early photography was black and white. This is not accurate. You see here why. The earliest photography was never black and white. In February 1841, Talbot revealed to the public his new discovery, the color type. The revolutionary aspect of this process lay in Talbot's discovery of a chemical gallic acid that could be used to develop the image on paper, which means to shorten the sun exposure time down to from hours to one minute. The paper-based color type process allow, allowed the production of an unlimited number of copies by simple contact printing. In early 1840s, Talbot started to use <laughs> sodium thiosulfate for fixing his photographs. These photographs are not stabilized, but fixed and more stable to light. We call them salt prints. You see paper negative on your left and positive salt print made from this negative on your right. Here you see two photographs representing two very first commercially successful photographic processes. On your left is a daguerreotype, and on your right is a salted paper photograph or salt print. Was daguerreotype the first photographic process or salt print was? Daguerreotype is a photograph made on silver plate and salt print is a photograph made on paper. Two very different processes, but invented at the same time. Daguerreotype is direct positive pro process, which with no negative. Salt print process is negative to positive, process to create multiple copies. Who can answer this question? There's still a disagreement between French and British about who invented photography. And I want to stress, to stress that photography invention was truly global and collaborative. To end my presentation, I want to say that evolution of photographic processes started from the very first day and stopped when digital photography took it over. From the very beginning, photography was looking truly for truly representation of reality. The global was, the goal was to have it in color and moving. Early photographs were often hand colored before color photography was invented. And the moving part brings us to moving pictures. 
in cinematography. But this is already a topic for a very different discussion. Thank you very much. And I will be ready to take questions if any. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elena. Um, there are many questions. Um, I thought maybe one of the first questions to kind of get our discussion going would be, um, we, we often think of photography, um, or at least many people think of photography as kind of having been founded in Western Europe. Um, and uh, you mentioned uh, toward the end of your presentation that it was truly a global collaborative effort. Can you maybe say more a little bit about, you know, um, because I was thinking there's also the connection, not just that people think of it as a Western invention, mm -hmm. but also, as you mentioned, uh, you know, not everyone could have their photograph taken. Mm -hmm. There was also an element of class there. Mm -hmm. um, can you maybe say a little bit on that? Yeah. Yes, that it's it's you know, Arthur, that's a very interesting question because it's true for any invention, actually. Mm -hmm. It's very true, and it's very true uh, that every invention is coming with a lot of competition to patent it, right? And a, a great example I uh, gave in my presentation is uh, the, um, oh my gosh, Florence, yes, from uh, who lived in Brazil and who, in, who first invented uh, even a word, photography. And it was in 1833, before the photography invention. But he, he was he was forgotten. He was his history was forgotten mm -hmm. just because he was not uh, experimenting in the center of the scientific world's uh, you know nations, mm -hmm. and it was resurfaced only in 1973. And I'm always thinking, how many how many other inventors still right. not resurfaced and. Yeah. You know how many experimentations were happening in all different countries obviously in those countries uh, where at that time it was uh, possible to do that because uh, obviously they, they were more privileged situation in different countries compared with others but then the idea to create something that would be truly honestly depicting the reality it was in every single nation i believe in that and yeah. there were a lot of experimentation happening, and, but we, we just don't know right. that history. And there's a lot of research still should be done mm -hmm. in, in, in that matter. I, I, for example, know that uh, it's a known fact, but I would say Armenian photography actually opened the door to photography in uh, to many Ottoman uh, Empire and Middle East. Yes. That was in the 50s, 60s uh, of the 19th century. So this kind of facts, they coming with time of the research done. So right. research and your project is super important. And everything that you're building through this project is helping to learn more about the invention of photography and the history of photography as well. Yeah, we yeah we hope to. Um, that is that's a, a project, uh, a specific kind of initiative. We hope to now that we have a new uh, website, uh, we hope to highlight and dig deeper to share our many many collections that we have from Armenian photo studios, mm -hmm. as you say, you know Ottoman Empire, uh, Middle uh, Lebanon, Syria, and, mm -hmm. and all around the world. Yes. Um, it, it definitely um, many people might not know that there is a very strong tradition mm -hmm. of Armenians uh, owning photo studios as photographers and so forth. And it's interesting, I was thinking, what, I, I forget how you phrased it earlier, but oh, that's right, that people were kind of racing uh, to uh, patent. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, it's one of those things where now we don't even think about the, I mean, as you say, you know, we're all photographers on our mm -hmm. Instagrams and all that. Right. But we don't think about the fact that even though it, of course, it is an art form, mm -hmm. um, 
these initial pioneers of photography, mm -hmm. they also saw dollar signs. Oh, they absolutely. And I will I will just jump in and I will say that Dagir was an, a great businessman. He mm. immediately patented his process and he actually created uh, beautiful samples that uh, French Academy of Science sent to the most powerful countries at that time as a mm. proof of this uh, process. And to compare, I like to say something about Talbot, who was very unfortunate with, you know, his patent that had a lot of, uh, he patented it later, and there were a lot of restrictions, and it's kind of, it was neglected. So it's, it's ultimately, even it's art, but it's still science, there's a lot of about patenting, uh, yes. you know, importance. Yeah. yeah. In, um it, it kind of brings to mind the whole, at this point, a lot of people know more about this, but uh, it brings to mind, you know, the Tesla versus Edison uh, competition, Absolutely. where really, you know, Tesla might have been mm -hmm. uh, a little bit earlier than Edison mm -hmm. or, or might have had more slightly more innovative ideas mm -hmm. but Ed edison was not only they were both geniuses but edison mm -hmm. was also a very savvy mm -hmm. businessman and public relations and all that stuff so it, it's 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 interesting how um, when we think of all the different mm -hmm. types of media or medium mm -hmm. that, that we now kind of take for granted it, it is mm -hmm. interesting to think about the initial pioneers of those mediums and how there are many kind of background characters that we don't know about now. Um, there's, a, there's a question we have here from one of our participants and he's asking um, what and when would you say, uh, or do we know specifically what and when was the first commercial application of photography? So that's uh, basically this, I mean, commercial application in terms of advertisement or just commercial application. Yeah, just because I, I would just say that the goal of the photography invention was to create a commercially successful process that would be used for you know, creating copies of, uh, I mean, obviously for taking images of uh, anything, including uh, people. And that is all, it, it all has commercial, basically nature. Mm. And daguerreotype and salted paper process were kind of established as two commercially successful processes even though there were other processes during the um, experimentation years, they were they proved to be not like, for example, heliography, Niepce's process. It was not commercially successful because the exposure time was eight hours, right? So <laughs> every, every and, but, but his role in a photography invention is huge because he created the first real photograph it's in austin texas and it's uh it could be uh, you know observed today and it exists it's permanent mm -hmm. and um, he created the first world photograph which is amazing but he his name was pushed out from the photography invention um uh, announcement Right. Which I mean, it that's that's a true story for any business related um, event. Right. And I, I guess in some ways, too, an, an, another um, way to answer Hobbit. Uh, thank you, by the way, Hobbit, for your question. Um, it would be that I guess in the very beginning, all of these photographic endeavors were commercial. Yeah, they were commercial. Mm -hmm. We think of photography as an art form. Mm -hmm. But I guess initially that was not on people's minds at all yes absolutely and that's why i i was you know i i i can have much longer presentation of course but since i'm i was very limited i just noted that that's what happened at the first half of 19th century it was yeah. global industrialization right. there were so many inventions like telegraph railroads and that's why this became uh, like a goal to create a medium that would be 
used through many countries, through many, you know, nations and, you know, and it was a possibility. It was created a possibility for that. That's what kind of provoked the invention of photography. Right. And that is very commercially uh, driven yeah. Uh, force. Yeah, um, it's interesting because I, you know, um, uh, when I was a professor, I would teach uh, courses on uh, modernism and modernity. So a lot of what you're saying are, are um, important elements of uh, uh, modernity, 19th and 20th century modernity. Right. What would you say is the, if we were to think, because, you know, basically we're, what we're saying is that photography, we think of it now as obviously some, a kind of an art form, uh, a great universal language, uh, th mm -hmm. that, right? Um, but really it was just another one of these world changing technological advances. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So what would you say, like, I mean, of course this is a very subjective type question, but I'm just fascinated to, for us to think about, we think of, you know, electricity, the light bulb, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, um, uh, infrastructure type things like, you know, plumbing or whatever, mm -hmm. things that we now take for granted. Uh, and as you say, you know, the locomotive trains. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you rank photography in the, in the kind of um, cataclysmic kind of the boom mm -hmm. Of, of modernity that started really in the mid 19th century. How, where do you rank mm -hmm. photography in, in, in all you, those dimensions? You're clearly asking a wrong person because <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated by photography. I still, I'm still learning about photography. And I more I work with photography, more I think about photography. I am realizing that that was such crucial discovery that impacted you know human race tremendously because you know i i i can't imagine how people lived without seeing photographs of their grandparents parents or seeing photographs of their relatives that live in another village or right. how of course every nation um invented a bicycle I, I believe in that. I, I grew up with that notion that my nation, nation invented a bicycle. And mm -hmm. then I was really, really confused when I learned that it's that's not true. But I think every no, nation invented a bicycle, yeah. uh, electricity, uh, yes. you know, it, it, it's as, it, Yeah, yes. it's as if these things were in the air. And... Exactly. It was just the time or when it just became very needed and everything was ready for that. Yeah. And, but I, you know, uh, and photography is one of them, and I will put it in the very on the very top ranking in that the whole system, just because the impact from the photography, right. especially, I mean, on in my understanding, it's just it's just unimaginable, because yeah. the whole history of human race and all nations cannot be really objective without photography right that's and yeah, that's right and and uh, one way that i think about and especially i mean obviously as you say you know we're a little bit biased because of our uh, field of work and our interests but um just purely from just a fact based uh position um there's two things one is um and this is something i try to impart to folks when we talk about Project Save and the, why both photography and archiving is so important, preservation. Yeah. Because, um, you know, uh, as, and I think you mentioned at the beginning of your presentation, let's say for one moment that suddenly all the 80,000, 90,000 uh, original photographs that Project Save has, we don't have them. They're mm -hmm. just gone. They don't exist. Mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about thousands, thousands, thousands of people mm -hmm. who are captured in these photographs, who are witnesses to uh, both good and mm -hmm. tragic parts of the last 100 years. So when we talk yeah. about the Armenian genocide, when we talk about World Absolutely. War I, World War II, yeah. American history, Russian history, global mm -hmm. history, you mm -hmm. name it, good and bad, mm -hmm. that these, this, these are the witnesses 
uh, to yes. those events. And there is no, you can have history books, you can have yeah. memoirs, you can have whatever you want, but there's nothing like an original photograph. Um, because for example, you know, for example, we don't have photographs of George Washington mm -hmm. or, or Peter the Great. Or, mm -hmm. So in our minds, those folks and the people that lived in that mm -hmm. period before, they're, they're basically, we just kind of mythologize them mm -hmm. in a way. Or we romantic, it's impossible for us to truly have a grounded perspective of pre photographic yeah. history. Um, so, so that's one. And then the other one is that I think photography is so important to modernity is it's the only one of those inventions that turns an eye and captures all the other inventions, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's because of the photograph that we get to see the first locomotive. It's because mm -hmm. of the photograph that we get to see the first airplane. It's because of the first photograph that we it's get to crazy. see. It's crazy. It's crazy to think really about it. You know, the subway cars. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The first all different country, countries and all different yes. people in the world. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's just um, really... Yeah, yeah. I, I'm getting to the nitty gritty of, of conservation. We have a question here mm -hmm. for you. Um, of the different form formats that you talked about and in your career that you've come across, what as a conservator, mm -hmm. what would you say um, is the most challenging format to mm -hmm. conserve? Mm -hmm. Like with which format of photography mm -hmm. is the most kind of difficult or it brings mm -hmm. up the most problems when you're trying to conserve an image? Yes. I... Thank you for that question, by the way. <laughs> excuse me i i will i will be honest with you i am uh i i will put late 20th century photography aside because mm -hmm. it's to me it's a very different uh, species in right. conservation but um for me for me actually uh daguerreotype is the most difficult process photographic process to preserve i'm not saying to conserve i'm not saying to rebound and change the glass and but to preserve for the future just because it's it just every daguerreotype is is made of totally not collaborating substances with each other with the way how it used and with the way how it meant to be presented and the, so everything is everything was done um uh, to daguerreotypes i don't want to say wrong but they have very 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 long history mm -hmm. from 1839 and very short history because they were existing basically for 20 plus years only it was a difficult process it was difficult to make it was difficult to preserve and it's still difficult to preserve and to keep it in that particular stage of preservation because it really requires very special conditions environmental conditions to keep it steady Yes, and I think I think that's all something that's important for for people to know um, that 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 we try to um, impart to folks is that you know uh, uh, preservation of photographs takes a lot of technical and logistical effort. Uh, you know, temperature controlled space, uh, safety, um, you know, uh, air quality, humidity you name it. Um, and uh, as you say, the older the photographs are, yeah. um, the more care and effort that goes into that. Um, th th uh, there's a follow-up question that I think is interesting. So speaking of kind of archiving, those, those original, those group of inventors of photography and maybe the, the folks right after them, let's say, were they already thinking about the kind of archival elements or capabilities did that absolutely did that... for example i mean these two processes that i more uh, I, I focused on today daguerreotype mm -hmm. and salpent for example daguerreotype the uh, daguerreotypes were immediately um uh, so daguerreotypist immediately understood that this object needs to be under the glass mm -hmm. because of the incredibly fragile surface so mm -hmm. That, that that became a part of presentation that became a part of the housing 
of daguerreotypes. So that that's being said. That's one example. And uh, second example, like salt prints, for example. So in uh, I, I could be I could give you a wrong date, but I I guess I'm right. In 1844, mm -hmm. it was a fading committee created because photographs were fading, salt prints were fading, and this is very not very stable, let's say a light stable and environmental stable process. So it's much less stable than later developed out self, developed out prints like black and white photographs that we know from 20th century, for example, right? So everything that did not have developing stage, those photographs are much more turned to, you know, fading and uh, yellowing. So yes, 1844. Wow, interesting. Um... Uh, people might be interested to know that the oldest photo at Project Save is from um, the 19th century. It's a salt uh, print. Um, Margaret, is that the one of Etchmiadzin? Yeah, it's it's a photo of the um, kind of one of the Vatican type uh, holy see, you know, seats of Armenian Christianity. Um, and yeah, yeah. So we we do have a number. <clears throat> Uh, quite a, a, a large collection from the 19th century and and kind of slightly earlier 19th century um, mm -hmm. before like the 1890s 1880s um I, I'm, I'm curious about I think you somewhere you mentioned reality <laughs> you said something about I think the question was how do we capture reality for these time so and that got me thinking I mean there's so many questions that brings up, uh, especially now that as 21st century people, as we think about photography now, mm -hmm. um, I, gu I guess the question it, it brings up for me um, as someone who is charged with an archive, mm -hmm. uh, yourself, who's a photo conservator, what do, what do you make of this in the last, you know, number of decade, two decades or more mm -hmm. uh, of the, you know, digital photography, mm -hmm. um, because obviously, you know, it, it, as, as we know, even beyond images, the whole question of facts and reality, mm -hmm. and we're living in a very strange kind of post-truth mm -hmm. uh, period. What, what's your take on mm -hmm. the kind of digital photography and how does that fit into, because you know, those are questions we think about all the time. We have people mm -hmm. that come to us now and they say, I do want to donate my mm -hmm. photographs to yes. Project Save, but they're, but they're digital born. Yes. And that's something we have to think about. And Absolutely. What, what after, after that is a crucial question. And I touched base a little bit. So during my talk about the invention of photography, I gave a definition from a focal encyclopedia that doesn't really apply to digital phot photography whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I would say, even as a conservator, uh, I would say that digital photography printed on paper, it's nothing to compare with a photograph because it's paper and ink. Right. So it's paper conservation. It's not photograph conservation. Even you know this. This is kind of very big division between this and this. But I, I see. I have to confess. I am. Uh, I. I'm very uh, disappointed by myself, because if you will look at my phone, I have thousands of digital photographs on my phone, mm -hmm. and I know they saved somewhere in a cloud. Yes. What, what if something will collapse? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't really trust it. I am old Hessian person. I am a conservator, you know, I'm very conservative. So I, uh, I would say it's two different species. And, and like I know Harvard University spent so big funding to keep digital photography up to changes in the industry. And, you know, we all know that we can't open that CD with photographs on our computers because we just, we just don't have that thing. Right. To put the CD on in our c 
computers. Right. So what to do? So right. imagine that there is a media, uh, 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 electronic media preservation at Harvard. It's a whole, it's a, a separate department. Right. Just because, because yes, that's our future. We have to, we will have to seriously think how to, how to preserve that digital imagery. And I'm not saying photography. That's I, it's a definition I made for myself. Right. It's a digital images. Yeah, those right. images could be printed, right. and then I would call them a pr a printed digital image on this photograph, photographic right. photograph, or uh, uh, paper, or whatever paper. Right. So, right. so yes, it, it's it's a big, it's a huge, huge uh, future um, challenge. Yeah, and I think I think one of the things too is that um, at least when it comes to uh, uh, when when people come to us or when they have questions about Project Save and the types of photographs we take, um, it, it uh, the digital element adds an extra layer of mm -hmm. questions because. <clears throat> There's already, I, I'm always trying to remind people when I, I, I'm finally able to get out and meet people. Uh, and I did my very first in-person presentation about uh, two weeks ago. And one of the things that I was really hammering home was when I was showing all these uh, very diverse, uh, powerful photos that we have in our archives from the 1920s, the 1890s, from all over the world. I was trying to explain to folks that, you know, the people that you see in these photos, Yes, these are beautiful photos, they're mm -hmm. powerful, but you know, they're just people. Mm -hmm. and, and when they were being photographed, they didn't sit down and say, oh yes, this one day, mm -hmm. this is gonna be a historical, mm -hmm. amazing looking photograph, you know? So, um, but what's happened is because of digital photography mm -hmm. and also probably some other things that we don't have time to get into now, but you know, mm -hmm. consumerism and mm -hmm. just a lot of other things, the internet. Um, we just think of photography now as such a throwaway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. utilitarian type thing mm -hmm. that uh, even if we do see beauty in it, it's somehow generally related to social media or Instagram mm -hmm. or something like that. So I was just trying to get people to understand that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they do have value. You might not think they do because at this point it's gotten so watered down. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that's a, that's so. So in other words, I, I agree with you. There's a challenge in terms of how we define mm -hmm. photographs mm -hmm. yeah. as archivists and institutions mm -hmm. and, and so forth. And to try to remind people that um, uh, th there actually isn't a huge difference conceptually, at least mm -hmm. between them taking a selfie of their them and their mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. and a, a photo of a family from 1930. You know, mm -hmm. but but yeah, it's a very tricky. It is a... very tricky. But I I will put just a, a little uh, tiny thought in into that. You know, I am when photographs are coming to my lab, I am treating them as objects. Right. They're not just an image. I treat them as objects, and that's very true for for example, photographic albums or scrapbooks. Those are objects that were in the possession of a family or different. I mean, somewhere, and yes. they were used as objects. Right. It, it, they are really physical objects, and that's that's the beauty of it. And it, it, and it, they faded. They have stains of, you know, uh, I don't know, a tear or a uh, coffee or so, or anything. It's a part of this object, yes. and it can tell a lot about the life that it, it's been through. So, That's right. and, and not just about this photograph's life, but you know, a life of, um, you know, the the this the family. Yeah. The, the city, the country. Sure. The, That's right. You know. Yeah, there's an element of you're right. That's a really good point. That yeah, we 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 think about that a lot too, and we we share we share that idea with people as well. That there's a, the materiality, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's what we. A lot of people uh, I've come to find out in the past year, there are plenty of people that that were thinking that Project Save was somehow a digital archive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think people thought that we take the photos, we digitize mm -hmm. them to, to preserve them, but then we mm -hmm. give the photos back to the donors. Mm -hmm. that, th that's a very separate thing. A mm -hmm. digital archive yeah. mm -hmm. has a completely different purpose and meaning than mm -hmm. a physical uh, mm -hmm. archive. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, as you say, is 
um, it's it's not just what's captured in the photo, but it's the you know that it's the hands that the photos mm -hmm. were in. Now mm -hmm. you're holding that photo. Yes, um, it's a history now. Yeah, it's like right. it's a it's a story. It's yeah. a story, really. Yeah, yeah. It's much more. Uh, so so I and I think I think um, as I say I think that's the tricky part of the 21st mm -hmm. century. You know, we're, okay. we're we're it's like we're all slowly just all living on the cloud, mm -hmm. and um, in a way there's a there's almost like a cognitive dissonance more mm -hmm. and more, um, where we we're maybe forgetting or we're losing sight of mm -hmm. uh, the value. It, it's almost like Walter Benjamin's you know uh, uh, age of mechanical reproduction gone berserk. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like gone gone to the extreme, um, and uh, yeah, no, you're right, and 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 that that's I think um, it's a tricky thing for archives, I guess. Absolutely, and they, the last thing I will say, that's why when you ask me how I can how this can be related, to, you know, how can we make it related to the project safe, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, this the invention of photography, not photography, but the invention of photography. This is it, you know, in the world we all familiar with digital photographs on the cloud just to have a little glimpse from how it was done and how technically it was and how many struggle people had to uh, you know to take to get it down done and to preserve that and then to send it to the world and you know it's it's, it's, it's huge it's really huge and it, it, it is very important to understand that materiality of photography right. especially today right 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 um thank you so much elena uh for your time uh we really really appreciate it um thank you all for for joining us um if there are any follow-up questions you can always reach out uh, to us at project save through our website projectsave.org uh, you please uh, follow us on our uh, youtube channel where we upload these uh, talks um, or on social media. So if, if you ever think of any follow-up questions, we're, we're happy to continue this conversation offline. Um, uh, our next event will be on November 9th with uh, Pavel Romanico, who's a photographer and a, a artist and a faculty at UMass. Um, he's also Project Save's first artist in residence. So we're very excited to be talking to him next month. Um, Elena, thank you again so very much uh, for your time. Uh, this was a lovely conversation. Thank you. Thank you. That was a privilege and my big pleasure. Thank you, Arthur. And thank you, everybody who joined this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.